This is not ceramic. This is a post-consumer wood-based product. It was so poorly installed. I don't like when I see irregularities on the height difference from one tile to another. The original installation involved nails. They nailed this. Two months the grout is cracking already. These lovely guys decided to plywood over a register that is still hooked up. The hell? They've stuffed carpet down there. They just don't care. Mike Holmes, did they actually do this right? No. No, they didn't. Not buggers. You want a good job to keep me in shape? I'll be a contractor. Unacceptable. God, I love my job. <laughs>are extremely thin. We want to see about three-eighths of an inch on the grout line, and I don't like that. I see a lot of uh, irregularities on the height difference from one tile to another. Actually, quite a few. There's some grout that's already started to crack. I don't know if it's, there's not enough grout or what. And uh, there's some chips. Put my money on it, though. That's just from adhesive that they got on the edge of the tiles, and they tried to remove it. This being a wood product, that actually looks like it's been sanded. They were experts. They'd done 100 installations. Uh, he was going to put his best guy on our job. It was so poorly installed. I mean, as soon as I looked at it, it's like, oh, this is not good stuff. This has to come up. The original installation involved nails. They nailed this. They nailed it down. They filled the nail holes with grout. So we still have some spots where the grout is covering the nail holes. We're starting to see cracking of the grout. We pointed that out to him several times, and he's, that's normal. You're gonna get some. It's not really cracking. Flaking. It's flaking. Two months the grout is cracking already, and that's just too early. If installed correctly, it will last a lifetime. Because the grout is cracked, we have a structural problem, and I have a feeling they have laid an improper subfloor on this. Okay, they've laid three eighths fir wood down. That's what they've laid, three eighths of an inch. It has to be a minimum five eighths of an inch, the subfloor. So right off the bat, your subfloor is incorrect and this would explain why your grout is cracking. An average 200 pound man walking across the floor would move the floor and crack the grout. Now what I really do want to see at this point is your uh, floor joists downstairs. Okay, I'm seeing these are two by eight floor joists and I don't like that. Did the uh, contractor at all come down and look at this? No. no. As soon as I look at two by eight floor joists, we know we want to beef your floor up on top of your existing five eights. Did they screw that subfloor down? No. No, it was nailed. They used a pneumatic nailer to nail down the tiles, which I've never heard in my life. Sloppy, this is sloppy. All right, let's go back upstairs. It just doesn't feel like it's ever gonna be special and great the way we planned. It feels like you just wanna sell and move <laughs> because there, there you are. There's been tears on this floor, <laughs> lots of them. People have many things to deal with, the sickness, disease, cancer. It's just the floor, but in our space, it's, it's a nightmare for us. Another thing that we found was uh, these things all over our grass. Don't tell me they use these. The, he told us they went to extra trouble to use spacers to make it look nice for us. 
These spacers were first designed for do-it-yourselfers, and it, it helped make it easy for people to put them in the floor like this. A lot of people think that you yeah. put it on the, on the, and this is not for floor, this one's for wall, just to let you know. Well, a lot of people think like you do this. it like that, like that and then he was going to leave it in. You don't, you use them on the top like this, because you do not want to uh, glue them in with the floor. You want to be able to pull them out later. Now that space alone is not enough for floor tile. We want to see three eighths of an inch. That's what I want to see on the floor. That's approximately that big right there. That's the ground space you should have had. I don't want to spend all this money on a floor that looks awful. What am I going to do? We have to solve this, but you don't know what your options are. You don't know how to fix it. I'm not, a, I'm not an installer of floors. I'm a kitchen person. We have jobs outside the home that are in different fields completely. I don't know how to fix this mess. This floor will never last, I'll tell you right now. This, this grout will crack and continue to crack. You will regrout, it will crack again. There's too much flexibility in the floor. My number one option is to remove all the cabinets, all the floor. We will talk to the granite people, the cabinet people, see what we can do. It has been glued down, and the problem with pulling this up is we could damage it, and that's an expensive cost to replace this. If we crack or chip this, the whole countertop has to be replaced. I love the granite, I hate the floor. The thought of removing it and possibly damaging it makes my stomach turn. So let's see what we can do with this, uh, but no matter what, I'm uh, determined to please you on this one and show you how they should have looked like in the first place. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. They have stuff perfect down there. You think that's going to hold anything? That's not going to hold nothing. It's a joke. We bought the house. We knew the kitchen needed an update. Floors were a concern. I see a lot of uh, irregularities on the height difference. They purposely bought this product knowing that it came from recycled material. Because the grout is cracked, we have a structural problem. It was so poorly installed. This floor will never last. We will talk to the granite people, the cabinet people, see what we can do. Because I really prefer to take everything out and pull all this up and do it again. What I would like to do is remove everything uh, to pull up this floor. Because you know as well as I do, we want the floor to go underneath the Absolutely. cabinets. This is glued down this granite and uh, I don't want to take the chance of this being cracked or chipped trying to remove this. I personally would like to remove it as well, but this, because of the sink and the weakness, is probably a good 90% that it will crack. If it wasn't for the granite, this would come up easily, wouldn't it? Not a problem at all. Yeah, we'll just take the cabinets apart again. Exactly. And out they go and we'll put and them all back in again. Exactly. Well, we'll cut around it and you know, we'll pull the dishwasher and go underneath because yes. I don't want to. If we were to just, uh, just redo this and tile in front of it, you'd never be able to pull the dishwasher exactly. out. Well, thank you very much, Anna. My pleasure. And I better get to work on this if I want to get it done. My pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. We're going to cut it all out. We're going to pull it up all the way around it. We'll remove the other cabinets on the other side that uh, we can move and pull out with the countertop on it. We'll pull out the fridge and all the cabinets on that side. And this, I mean, this is a lot of work just to Repair the tiles. We're gonna make this look uh, beautiful. Nine. Nine. We'll just go square. Oh, lovely. <sighs> this thing's heavy, eh? Nice to see it, Don. You too, Mike. We're gonna lay the tile the same direction. We're gonna do a four inch kick plate around. So I grabbed 440 square feet. Okay. Uh, the backsplash, we're gonna have a diamond pattern. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna remove the valances here. We're gonna go up to the cupboard. We're gonna come around and go in. Same on that side, and then we'll cut these back and put them back in place again. Okay. I would be surprised not to find problems underneath this floor. This was a crappy job to begin with. I mean, uh, 12 by 12 tile, I'd never lay this close together, never. The floor itself is not level. It bows up and down right here. And uh, you got a lot of edges up higher than the tile next to it here on the floor. With a good grout job, you should be able to slide a coin across the floor. You wouldn't be able to do that here. Well, the adhesive appears to have done a, a good job. I don't know what this material is. Obviously, it's, it's made for it. It's not what I would use. Four by four tile, okay, fine. You use something small like that. But if you had a 12 by 12 tile, you need a good base underneath it. Well, it's wood, so we'll be able to cut through it. Okay. 
Rob just pulled up this piece, we can see that the way they've done the nails, they didn't even care to find the, the floor joists. First of all, we don't want nails. We want screws. And if you do not get it directly into the floor joist, all you have is the structure on the existing wafer board subfloor. And it's just not strong enough for the two by eight floor joist, way too much movement. We want three inch screws right into the floor joist, eight inch on lines, and then four inch square, we want to screw it into the existing subfloor to pull it nice and tight. You know what's funny? This is made from post-consumer waste. So we don't have to throw it into the, the, the dump sites. And here we are taking it up and it's going to the dump site. Silly. Uh, so we need 14 sheets of construction grade, three quarter inch plywood. 14? Yeah. You don't want me to get the cement board, right? Well, the Duro Rock is a, a really strong quality board, but anytime you got two by eight floor joists, I really don't recommend anything other than three quarter inch plywood construction grade. It's gonna be more rigid. You know why we want the construction grade? For, because it's got texture, which will grab the, it'll grab the thin set mortar. You're the man. If it's smooth, then you're not going to get the adhesion that you need. You're the man. You're learning very well, sir. All right. Let's, uh, I won't be long. These lovely guys decided to plywood over a register that is still hooked up. I can actually feel the forced air coming through the corners here. And this was their way of closing off the duct line. Uh, blows me away. It's just a poor way of doing it. Why didn't you disconnect it downstairs, close it off, the They've stuffed carpet down there. That's a great way of closing this off. Why didn't you fold it all in, tape it all up? Look at this, look at this. Here's the nails they put through the damn tiles. They even used, and here's the funny part, they used pneumatic nailer. You can tell by looking at the nail, there's no ridge. This is our dock, it's screwed. You could say it's like a screw, but it's not. You think that's gonna hold anything? That's not gonna hold nothing. Definitely the adhesive has to be complete. It has to be the full tile, not just part of the tile. This creates a weak zone because it's not bonded to anything. That creates flexibility. That, because that is not glued, will make the grill crack, which we're seeing everywhere. They are using 3 8 board, and I even think they actually have it upside down, because it's good one side. Here's the construction grade side. The other good one side. We want these divots. We want to bond into it. It's a joke. jump ahead and help you with the backsplash. Absolutely, that'd be great, Mike. I think they'll be home any minute. This is not ceramic. This is a post-consumer wood-based product. It was so poorly installed. This floor will never last. This, this grout will crack. There's too much flexibility in the floor. <laughs> well, everyone needs one of these, an all-terrain tile saw. Probably not so good for my tailgate, eh? Well, I just did a layout here on the floor. If you're going to have cuts on both sides of the room, try and have as big a cut as you can. Just aesthetically, it looks a lot better that way. And are going to end up with a half a tile on that side of the room, and on this side of the room, about a quarter tile of a cut, which will still be a nice size. The tile, you can see, has a grain on it. You want the whole floor to have the same grain, the grain going the same way, so I'm going to have the grain going this way on the floor. So, so the flow of it will come that way when you look in the door. Start off properly so that you finish properly. Take your time. Make it look good. The guy who taught me told me to treat it like it was your own place and your wife was watching. I love it. I mean, it's, it's a big payoff. Not only, uh, not only can I make a living doing this, but after a job, I get to look at it and, and appreciate what the customer sees in it. And, you know, they go, wow, when it's done. And I mean, I, every time, I go, wow, as well. What I did here is I scratched it on. When I'm putting it onto a plywood like this here, I scratch it onto the plywood so I have a good contact all the way around. And then I'll notch it. Because if I just notched it, then you might end up with spaces where it's not 
completely contacted to the floor. But if I push it onto the floor like so, then my mud is guaranteed to stick all the way around. Some really nice tile they got here, porcelain. Very popular. Very popular tile. We've gone through a lot of clothing in doing this, I'll tell you. When you lay down the tile, you're gonna make contact at the top of this. And when I bang it down, like so, I'm spreading the mud out around the bottom of the tile so you can get a good grip on it. You keep feeling around the joints like this so you don't have a tile. Like right here, that's a little high in this corner. I got enough mud underneath to play with it. Screws. This is about uh, probably 3,000 screws by the time we're going to be done. If you don't put them in there, your floor is going to shift. When that floor shifts, the grout's going to crack, you have chances of breaking tile. You don't want it. So adding a few more screws, it sounds silly. I don't think so. The base cabinet will grout that first. And if that doesn't look good enough, we're going to add some wood trim. We can use three quarter round. We can use cold molding. We can use just strip oak wood, much like it looks like on the ends there, and just run it across. And it'll look like we tiled right underneath it. We want to make sure we get off all the adhesive. This is the concrete adhesive that we've used. We want to get it off the edges of the tile. So if you leave this on and then grow, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. Before he gets ready to grow, we actually have to go through every little nook and cranny to make sure the edges are clean. I'm gonna jump ahead and help you with the backsplash. Absolutely, that'd be great, Mike. And um, on top of that, I'm using sanded grout for the backsplash as well. Yeah. They're sanded and non-sanded. Sanded is usually for, for the floors because the sand adds strength to it like a concrete. Determining where to start is really trying to come, first setting up a few tiles across the wall and then trying to equal your cuts on each end. It's very important. If you hire a professional tiler and he comes in and he just, you know, he doesn't even check ahead and he just starts slapping them up, there's a man that doesn't care because his job is to come in, tile it and leave. So he doesn't care. But if he carefully plans ahead and checks it out, you know he's a good tiler, he cares about his work. That's what I want to see. Now these, these tiles are a little heavy on the wall and I don't want them to move so I just put in a tacking nail to hold it in place so it doesn't drop. Excellent job, Stan. I love it. I'll just give you a couple of nails to help uh, tack and hold them up. Thank you, Mike. That'll work great. You want to make sure you get grout underneath the tile as well as filling in the joints at the same time. Lots of contact with your float. Try to keep it as flat as you can. You don't need to turn it high on an angle. Keep it flatter. It'll push the grout in better. This is a great grout for this tile. This, I believe, is sandstone. It brings out the green in the tile because throughout the tile you can see that kind of color in it. Well, what I normally do is, if it's a small area like this, I'll grout the whole thing. And then just wipe down the area before you move on to the next one. It's always a good idea to wait till the next day before you start trotting around on it. I think they'll be home any minute. Okay, open them up. Oh my God, look at this, this is awesome. Okay, open them up. Oh my God, look at this, this is awesome. This is so awesome. What a difference, it's like it's a different kitchen. It's just oh, so man. beautiful. Just pulling up that crap floor that was down there and uh, not only replacing it all and doing the backsplash and painting it, I, I feel great that I can leave here and uh, know that it's gonna last forever. It just looks so different, it looks so finished, it looks so awesome. Now the backsplash is not grouted because we have just put it in today. We have to let it dry for at least 24 hours. I can't, and it match, I can't believe everything it. Everything matches, it goes so beautiful, this backsplash. You paint it? Yeah. 
Today you painted? Yes, we did. I'd like to hug. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely smooth, proper growth space. I love the backsplash. Absolutely love it. You have to educate yourself. The more you learn, the less you're going to have this happen to you. This grout will not crack. And the floor doesn't move. <laughs> There's it doesn't creak. There's about 3,000 screws in this floor. How many How nails were in it? Uh, so probably 150. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So 150 it nails yeah. compared right. to 3,000 screws. Have nowhere near enough. Unbelievable. A lot of people out there just automatically assume they hire the contractor, okay, we'll go to work now, or, or we'll go on vacation, or I don't want to be in the dust. And they disappear and then come back to what they believe is supposed to be a complete renovation. Never leave the job site. Take pictures. Be involved in it. If you are away, they will play. This diagonal looks so amazing. It's like perfect. It's beautiful. It's unbelievable. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. It's, I just never right thought thing. this kitchen would be nice. Great, fine, my dream, and it is. Like So thank you very much. Now, the granite stands out. Yeah, that backsplash is amazing, isn't it? It's it just mind-blowing, it's great. One thing we do know is something that has been used for years and years and years, it works. It's been proven. Now this doesn't mean that you can't use a new product, but by all means, make sure that it's well tested and that you're happy with what you see as an end result by checking it first. Wow, flat, flat, everywhere it's flat. Not one even spot. And you notice the difference? All the grain in every single one of these tiles runs the same way. If you change these tiles, it's, it's no different than the other tiles that were down. If you change the grain, it stands out. It's not gonna look right. Everything flows. You guys have treated us properly, more than properly. I thank you once again, sir. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I mean that's from the bottom. Very of my welcome, heart. sir. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Come by any time. I'd like that. No, you're welcome. I'd you like and your whole team I'd like that. will forever be welcome in our home. Thank you. Take it easy. If you do it right the first time, it will last and it will look damn good.